Hey, this is John Bakold from Pattern Seeking Animals. And this is Ted Leonard from the very same band. And you are listening to Sonic Perspectives. Sonic Perspectives. Yay. Yay. Everybody, yes. We Everybody got... clap. Please clap. We got these cats here, these animals here um, in the studio. Nice to have you both. I think, you know, last time we spoke for the last album, we had all four of you here. And that was like so much mayhem we had to cut it in half because right too much to handle and and plus those other two guys are boring anyway you don't want to you don't want to die to them not not to the rhythm section no (laughs) yeah no it's just the rhythm section you can do a separate rhythm section interview the likelihood of something inappropriate being said you know just is is doubled it increases exponentially no doubt with each member i think i usually cover um, quite a bit of ground in that area myself so yeah yeah I figured if we had you on board, that's like really all, all we needed for the for the mayhem. That's what I tell everybody all the time. Yeah, so what <laughs> else? Do you do? One man band. All right, gentlemen. Well, three albums in just about as many years. Um, impressive track record. You've gotten off to a, a leaping start, and uh, so I want to start by asking, how do you see the evolution of the band over those three albums? Um, boy, it's tough because because they're so quickly. I think they run into each other in in my mind anyway. Because I'm always working on something. You know, we end one and I start another one. So, I think we, I think we've evolved in the sense that the first album wasn't didn't start out to be an actual album. It started out to be uh, demo sessions and a, more of a project, and then it was made into an album in a group. Uh, by finishing the other ones. And I think by Prehensile Tales, I think we more established this, a definite sound to the band. And the third album, I, I think uh, Only Passing Through just expands on that. Yeah, I would say that, that you know, there's, a, there's all the comparisons drawn to that other band that we were involved in. And- um, The Bee Gees. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I, refer, I think we're getting further and further away from sounding anything like that, uh, that particular band, uh, especially with this new album. So, uh, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely become its own thing, I think. And the first, the, I mean, I think it, it always sounded very different, especially from a keyboard sound perspective and, and also guitar sound, you know, nobody sounds like Al. So um, uh, it was, or, it was already kind of, differentiating itself that uh, back then but but it seems like more so with this new album yeah i i got that feel for sure and i mean speaking of guitar there it feels like ted you know you're bringing more of a presence on the guitar on this album you know especially with the solos how, how is that evolving for you i begged so john's the the uh the... Big hold yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um uh, yeah, well, I kind of felt like the first album had a, had a pretty good guitar presence, presence, and then the second was more um, a lot of natural instruments and, and really cool and interesting arrangements that, that wasn't quite as um, electric dominant. Um, and so it was it was kind of cool to hear that element come back for me because I'm a rocker at heart. So I, you know, so it, it was nice. I think it's definitely it's definitely. Um, been fun for me. It's the, that's the, the, one of the most exciting things about this project for me is is getting to step out in that role because it's, most people just think I'm a dumb singer. So yeah. <laughs> that's what my yeah. It was actually funny. I was, there was a transatlantic uh, thing going on on um, on Facebook, and someone said, "Why would they hire just like another vocalist?" You know, for right. the ship. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that's, that's what people. That that's what you bring to transatlantic or or the harmonies. Yeah, apparently. That's yeah. Very hot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you definitely got some of the rockers in here um, on this album. You know, like I'm not all right and and much ado are are pretty kicking. I like those. Yeah. Oh, much, like... Yeah. Much ado. I was going to say that's when I've been trying to get to do in this band for a couple albums now and Ted Five, I kept bugging him. I want to do that song. And the first time he wanted, he was thinking it was going to be done with another band. 
<laughs> and uh, I finally wore him down, and we got to do it on this album. Yeah, is I always that, love that. Song. Is that Ted's song? What to do is Ted's song. Yeah. Oh, right on. Yeah. It didn't hurt. It didn't hurt that that other band was dragging their feet on making another album, you know, and and by um, and by any if history is any indication, it could be another decade before <laughs> before they <laughs> actually get one out. So, and that that song's been sitting uh, on the shelf. I mean, I've had that song for ten years. I wrote that's one of those. I, there was a string of songs I wrote during uh, my divorce. <laughs> that was one of the the divorce songs. <laughs> so, so, well, I guess you write a song about nothing. It's going to take a little while to to get on the page, huh? Yeah, yeah. Ted, yeah, yeah and Ted's songwriting output is very fertile along around divorces and bad life situations. So. I know, but it's the pro the problem with my writing. Uh, lately is that I, you know, I like my wife and, uh, ooh, that's going to be fine if my ex here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the problem is I'm happy, you know, I, I, I do better when I'm, I can't write about happy things. I don't know why. It's just, that's not my bag, I guess. I don't know. So aside from that song, John, or most of the uh, songs yours again? Uh, yeah. Uh, a couple of my co-wrote, uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors, and um, one of the bonus tracks, um, Just Another Day at the Beach, uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors was a, a song I've had forever. And I rewrote it for Pattern Seeking Animals. I wrote it with Molly Pizzuti, who actually did uh, work with Spock Spirit a lot when Neil was with him. And also, well, actually, when, when Nick was, you know, she, she did, did a lot of backing vocals and everything. So I've known her forever. So that one then, uh, um, Just Another Day at the Beach, I wrote with a friend of mine, Stanley T., who I've been writing with for forever. He's a great writer. So we get together and write very non prog sounding songs. <laughs> well, on this one, we've, uh, I think this is the first time you've had a title track of uh, an album, right? Is uh, what led you to title the album after the track only passing through? Well, because I came up with a whole, I, I, I constantly have a running list of titles and lyrics and everything, and I have a list of things to make great album titles and everything I would put it put out to everyone everyone was kind of so-so on and I wasn't nothing was really you know clicking with me and finally only passing through I thought well that sounds like a good one uh, it sounds like it works it, it could mean a few different things it could mean like uh kidney stone yeah kidney stone only passing through it could mean something really metaphysical like we're only passing through this existence on the on the cosmos uh, the the astral plane, or it could mean just like an old uh, western, like yeah, exactly, like an old western, uh, like in the middle of uh, time has a way, you know, just passing through, ma'am, like an old western you see in those uh, cowboy movies all the time. And I just thought, I think thought it fit really well. Nice. Yeah, I'm really interested in that time has a way. You know, there's, uh, of course, you love getting these spaghetti western uh, themes coming in. It's becoming. Oh, yeah. A signature sound now of the band and um I i'm trying to figure out the if there's a connection in that story of that part of the middle part of the song to the lyrics that precede and follow it no i, I that whole story is just passing through it's just yeah exactly per perfect you should be my publicist uh yeah no it's uh, originally i had the lyrics just or only passing through in that center section but it didn't quite it didn't quite sing right in the way I was writing it. I was trying to work in different ways, and I thought rather than trying to shoehorn it in, let's just go through it. And that's that's why I guess uh, is you know the stranger wandering through the border towns. Since I had it in my head of only passing through, it kind of fit. But no, lyrically there's no, there's not really a connection between the story. Okay, I wasn't sure if I was missing something there, but but I, but I love the lyrics. You know, she doesn't love here anymore. I kept right. looking, like. Is that live? She doesn't live here anymore? No, yeah. it's, she doesn't love here. And that's a pretty cool phrase. I, I haven't heard that before. Yeah, I, it's, I've heard similar things to it in country, old country music, because I'm a big country, old country music fan. I used to write it. And uh, that those type of turn of phrases came from my brain when it was writing country lyrics. Nice. Nice. Uh, so you've been bringing this, you know, Tex-Mex border town vibe uh, in increasingly. So I'm, I'm wondering where the inspiration's coming, like what kind of movies are you watching or, or what's going on there? 
it's not really movies per se. I mean, some soundtracks, obviously, uh, you know, the old Morricone stuff and the, you know, spaghetti westerns from the Clint Eastwood back in the day. Um, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly and all those movies. But I just like the sound of the instruments. I like the, that twang. I like the, just the, you know, the chimes, just that emotional vibe, the electric sitar. It's just cool to me. And it's a different, and it's a different, texture than you normally hear in a lot of prog music it's just something you don't expect i think it's really compelling you know when it's done right it can be pretty cool you know the, the big spring reverb on the on the guitars and all that kind of stuff i just i love the sound of it so why not totally <laughs> if it sounds good do it ted are you going to throw a cowboy hat on and on stage when those sections come up i don't have time i i'm making patch changes and you know my brain my cpu is already in the red if you open up for this whole set well for this whole next two months of my life it's going to be insane <laughs> I, I can't even imagine that now was i mean we're, we're going to get to the live uh concert questions in a second but since you're bringing that up I, am i looking at my calendar right that the debut concert of pattern seeking animals is wedged in between two transatlantic gigs yeah, so I'm flying the morning of Easter morning, you know, to to get to Florida from uh, from New York, and then flying the next morning to get to Ontario. I think it's no Quebec City. Um, Quebec, Quebec. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to be it's going to be tight. Wow, that that was a scheduling wonder that that happened there, huh? To make all that happen. Well, because everything kind of fell into place. Well, first of all, I think the Rosfest thing was was around for a long time i don't think it got rescheduled um but when neil oh it did get rescheduled yeah originally it was i think it was going to be later it was going to be a couple weeks later yeah Yeah, and then then the cruise changed cruise to the head changed and then they had to change rosfest because so they went on the same weekend that would happen um but anyway so when neil asked me to to do it i I was like okay well how how are we going to do this and it worked out because they were taking easter off so um and it's all east coast so the flights you know can be fairly short you know five hours maybe i think with the layover it's five hours Mm -hmm. so uh, so it's not too bad as long as nothing goes wrong in your head yeah 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 well that too that's the the scary thing is like i'm i i feel like i have a pretty good handle on all the psa stuff now Uh, and now i'm just getting into the four hours of music that that they gave me and <laughs> only four <laughs> yeah because they're in morse fest and so they're doing all of the whirlwind and then all of the new album oh i don't know if i'm supposed to yeah that that's public info yeah you're good there okay cool so so which is like two tours where they both have the both nights have their own encores 30 minutes of you know ethics and stuff and so it's two tours worth of music man and i'm like they better be paying me for two tours that's all i'm saying <laughs> it's ridiculous I, and I just, I'm just, I'm, I'm about 45 minutes into uh, the four hours that I need to learn of theirs. Huh. And, and it's just, you know, and it's not just, I'm, it's not like I've learned that much. I've just charted that much. And uh, so actually I have a call with Neil right after this. He's been traveling since his tour. So anyway, right. but that's not what this interview is about. Say hi to Neil for me. <laughs> I will. We haven't talked to him in a while. So for for you guys going on stage, first time ever. I mean, it it's been a long time coming. And um, tell us about what the live band's gonna look like. Well, I'm not involved in the live band. Um, I think we've talked about that before, and I've, yeah. that was the plan for the last one. So besides Ted, Jimmy, and Dave, we got these two killer uh, a guy named Dennis Atlas, who's this young keyboard one of these young prodigy whiz kids. And he also plays, he also sings and plays other instruments and stuff. And then um, Walter Eno, who's been around, he's been a pro, Jimmy's worked with him a lot to to handle other guitar and some keyboard and vocal stuff. So it's going to be a pretty jam packed uh, stage with a lot of talent up there. We're going to have four lead singers and Dave. And Dave. (laughs) And Dave can actually, can actually sing, but he just chooses not to. He does. Every, when, I, when I was in a cover band with them, whenever I felt like I wanted to annoy the crap out of them, I would start in on a, on good old um, 
I lost my guitar. Oh, that's right. I turned my volume down. On. Because he knew he had to sing that song. And he would he'd get this look on his face like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Which, that's the song. I realized we can't even play that song anymore. So there's yeah, a lot David. of songs. Yeah, Dave has a really good voice. His pitch is really good, but he's never, I've known him for like 40 years. He's never liked singing, but he does it out of duty. <laughs> yeah. he's, a, he's a good, you know, backing vocalist, though. He's got great pitch. And yeah. So yeah. Walter Eno, if you look at, um, his last name is spelled I-N-O. If you look up online, he's he does all these one-man band um, things. So does Dennis Atlas. If you want to create some excitement about the live band, they both have a lot of online content. Walter Eno actually was played, I think, guitar um and, and or keyboards for survivor and he's playing with the babies right now he's babies, awesome. yeah. yeah so wow. he's kind of a it's kind of a big deal you know so it sounds like you've got a uh, got it pretty well covered music musician wise how about the set list how do you decide your your debut uh performance is coming after you've got three albums out already i know there was a lot of <clears throat> a lot of back and forth about that and um you know because there was there was different schools of thought on it uh, you know, you want to promote the new album, but then nobody's seen any of this before. And so it's all, I think we kind of, we still, there's a good, a good amount of the new album, but, uh, but yeah. we tried to just hone in on what we thought was going to come across best live because it's going to, for a lot of people, 90% of the people on either the cruise or the festival, this is all going to be new to them, I would suspect. Yeah, um, it's split, the songs are split, split pretty evenly between the three albums, which I think is a good idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. And especially since they've all come out, you know, within like a little less than three years. So it's not like we do one album and wait five years and come back. It's not like the old era. We're doing something from the from the nineties now. It's nothing like that. It's all relatively new to most people. So yeah, it's it's a pretty even split uh, split between the, the albums. But well, we're finding what we're finding that you know after I think if we had if we had played live after the first album we probably would have all come back to John and say, hey, next time you're writing an album, can you keep in mind that we're going to have to play it live someday? <laughs> right. I get that. I've gotten back and play my entire life, believe but me. Because we, we're three albums into it. You're screwed. Yeah. And yeah. we're, I mean, I know Dave is like, he's he's having a heck of a time. <laughs> I've gotten some really funny emails from him like at 1.30 at night yeah. saying, saying that a certain song can perform oral calculation uh, yeah, itself. <laughs> yeah. He said, no burdens left to carry. Can sign. Anyway. Yeah. Can yeah, actually, no burden left to carry because I listened to that when, when everyone was going over the set list. And I'm, I'm just letting the guys, for the most part, decide what songs in the set list. I have a few gentle suggestions, but ultimately they're the ones who have to play it. And I was listening to No Burden Left to Carry. And there's this inter instrumental section with this ascent solo. And I, I listened to it and I thought, what the hell was I thinking with these time signatures in this solo? Yeah. And I think what happened was I came up with a solo, then chopped it up to fit it later. I didn't realize I'm thinking, oh, geez, I got to watch myself and sometimes on these things. But it was it was really off the wall, some of these time signatures. Yeah, so we're we're all facing that. This, you know, it's funny, like the, in music, you, you like to it's, it's a nice it's a tr it's a it's a clever trick to write something that sounds more difficult than it is. And John writes in the exact opposite manner. So yeah, where everything it sounds really <laughs> nice and flowy and everything flows together and it's it doesn't sound nearly as complex as it is. Um, so it's been really it's been interesting. I'm I've been working on this stuff for about a month and a half. So I'm past the explicative stage now. But uh, yeah. but Dave, Dave he's just he's just in the resignation stage. <laughs> it's like the, <laughs> you know, it's like leading to death, the final stage, resignation, acceptance, right? Well, good luck in the in the coming weeks, boy. Uh, so, getting back to the album itself, you know, it starts off with your shortest song ever, uh, "Ever Dark Mountain," and. I'm listening to it and it it like carries these signatures of a huge long epic and then suddenly whoop it's done um why did you decide to keep it at that length and not expand on it well that was the last one I wrote for the album uh because as I write I uh, a lot of times most people most sane people the band will go into the studio and record like 20 songs and at the end get together with the producer and the record company and everyone and say okay what songs are going to end up on the album 
me, as I'm writing them, I start putting them in positions where I think they're going to fit in the album. You know, I think, oh, this is a perfect closing. Like uh, the song Here With You With Me, to me, it was a perfect closing song. So that was r locked in. And I got to the end and I thought, none of these songs really, to me, feel like an opening song. So I thought, well, I'll just write something. And then if it, you know, I'll write something which I think with the right vibe for the op for the opening. And usually, you, I, I usually I'll sit there and come up with a verse, chorus, verse, chorus. And I wrote the song and arranged it. Started working on it. It was about right, two forty-five. And I thought, oh, that's too short. I gotta, I gotta flesh this out. And I tried a few different things, and it just seemed extraneous. Anything else I was putting in there just seemed. Well, I'm just trying to, you know, do prog wanking here or whatever. <laughs> you know, it was like, why, why am I putting it in here? And I just up oh, two forty five it is, and that's uh, that's the way it was. And plus, I I'm a, I'm a pop fanatic and have been forever. So to me, that's that's just totally natural. But I guess a lot of prog, you know. Okay, where's part two? It's only two forty five. Is that section? Is that the first part of a song? <laughs> yeah, but no. It sounds. I mean, the storyline that that you know gets touched on before the song ends is really cool, though. You know the. It's, it's this creepy dude who's, you know, manifesto changed the world and, or, you know, it, I think it's, it, it could have easily, maybe it's going to be one of those songs that John writes a sequel to, you know? Yeah, it's a guy who just, uh, he's kind of a world leader at some point. I, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a cult or whatever, but he, uh, he's looked as a leader than people discover he's a charlatan. And then he looks within himself and discovers that the, uh, the devil has taken over his soul. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who knows? It, it could be. It could be a, a sequel coming out. Be cool. I think that, that part two. Be a premise for an entire album, right there. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, right. rock paper scissors. You you mentioned that before as as a co-write, but uh, tell us a little more about those those themes. Some really clever arrangements and lyrics in there. Yeah. When it was written with, I wrote it with Molly again years and years, many years ago. I recorded it actually with a band I had. You know a couple decades ago and it never it never gelled to me the song and i don't know what it was but it's a few years ago i looked back at it and just had these uh, light bulb over the head moments like of course i should have done this i should have gone to the chorus here i should have done that so i started rewriting it and lyrically by the time we were going to record it i thought well some of these are kind of old it, it doesn't really it doesn't seem contemporary so we changed a lot of the things to or I did, I changed uh, a lot of the words, uh, again, a lot of imagery uh, of uh, war and battles and modern day uh, computer games, whatever, but in some kind of dystopian alternate universe where those, those things have real world consequences. <clears throat> and again, not too on the nose, but it was just based around kids games and things like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that. Do you want to play a game? Do you want to play a game? <laughs> yeah. Um, and John, you mentioned earlier, really feeling that here with you, with me is like a great closer. I, I love that song and it's got a different Thanks. different vibe than I think most of what we've heard before from you guys. I mean, it almost feels like it's going to be this huge thing and it's going to be this really beautiful ballad, but it just keeps moving so much uh, in, in wonderful ways. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that one uh, started out to be almost like a Philadelphia soul. If you listen to the chants, yeah. like it's almost like Prague, like it's almost like the Shy Lights or Hall and Oates or something like. That. I was, I like the changes, and it had that kind of vibe to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, the other thing I started thinking was that uh, people don't. There was a there was a period in time years ago where every song would fade out and have these long fades at the end of it. You know, giant, giant fades every song faded out, then everyone got away from that. All of a sudden, nothing was fading in there. It was just an, et, just an end to a song. Uh, and I like the idea of doing, okay, I want to do something with a super long fade with a, uh, a long guitar solo to end the album. So that was, when I started with that one, I'm, uh, at, at the beginning, I thought that's going to be the closing song. It has to have this super long, let Ted solo for a couple minutes and <laughs> just you know get bigger and bigger and bigger as it's, with a super long fade. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after that, we've we've still got two bonus tracks on there. So is it was it your choice, John? That you know these just don't really fit in with the theme of the album, but they're good songs. So just make them quote bonus tracks. Well, for the 
per the contract, we have to supply a bonus track, at least one. Uh, pattern, or with the prehensile tails, they didn't make us do that. And that might've just been because it was during the pandemic and they didn't want to, you know, it's just, we just want to get it out, whatever. But this time I said, we want a bonus track. And also on my end, I've been getting, I get to the point where albums are just too damn long these days. They're just too, it's too much. You know, just because you can fit something on an 80 minute CD or whatever it is, doesn't mean you have to. And maybe it's just because when I, when I grew up and the stuff I listened to, but after about 40, 50 minutes, my, I just, even though the album might be great, I just start losing interest in it. That's like, that's enough. So I've, I was really intent on making the album no longer than 50 minutes. It turned out to be 51 minutes. Um, I could have easily made the album so those two songs fit in there. I, I had an alternate um, running order where they could have, but I forced myself to make it short. So the actual album itself is at five, eight minute, 51, you know, uh, five, uh, 51 minute uh, length, and then the two bonus tracks. Mm -hmm. And of the two, of the two, I thought that. Uh, they didn't really fit the other songs. They could have. They could have fit in there. But I thought, okay, we'll just make these the, the bonus tracks. And I'm totally happy with the way both of them turned out. Yeah, yeah. I'm not alright. It's one of my favorites on there. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, tell it's me another. Other... Another, Ted song, another Ted song. That's another. That's another from the same divorce series. That divorce yeah. series yielded quite a. <laughs> yeah, quite a catalog. It's like nine... the we're like yeah. nine songs in like six weeks at, at that point. Hiding Out is one of them from uh, Spock's Beard. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's a bunch of them that uh, I think um, Minion was one of them, if you remember. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of songs that came from that little batch span of time yeah. that are very depressing if you read them. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing it's, you've spread them out. Yeah. yeah. It's, a Ted, it's, a, it's the Ted Leonard divorce compendium of sad songs. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, yeah, a song like um, Not All Right, you know, I, I love the backup vocals in that. So so tell me a little bit about there's a lot of vocals on this album. And so and I know Jimmy's got a great voice, too. So how much of the backup vocals is Ted? How much of it is Jimmy or even Dave? Uh, no, Dave's not Dave. I didn't get Dave to sing in this album. I've learned my lesson. I don't need. <laughs> yeah, he's one of those. Yeah. We joke, but it's it's usually like he'll say, "Okay, I'll sing something of absolutely necessary." Like, okay, fine. <laughs> but but um, well, obviously uh, Ted does all the leads. Jimmy does. Jimmy and Ted do a lot of the backing vocals. My vocal is in the blend. My backing vocals are in the blend in a few tunes, but it's a few tunes. It's mostly uh, Jimmy and Ted doing the backing vocals. And then for uh, Rock Paper Scissors, I got a couple girls to sing backing vocals. Um, they're both young and have little, little kid-like voices. I specifically found them for that and uh, got them to do the rock, paper, scissors part. And Are you driving a van? Found him? Hmm? Just, are you driving a van near a school? Yeah, hey, little girl, you want to be on an album? <laughs> yeah, actually, I found them both on a, on a, a site called Sound Better, which is professional musicians uh, available to do demos and they do everything virtually there's no they don't get no one gets together but it's it's a huge website and you can find virtually anyone you want to do any kind of part and you you contact and they say we well, you know, will give you this much i just need these vocal parts you send them the tracks and they send them back so that was uh that was that one um but yeah mostly the vocals ted and jimmy and i'm i'm a huge fan of big vocals and big harmonies and a zillion different parts again because i listen to so much pop and I listen with headphones and you realize how many, how many vocals, even stuff you don't, that aren't necessarily right in the forefront, there are in, in a lot of pop songs. You put on headphones and you're, th and you're thinking, oh, there's all these vocal parts in there I've never heard before, but they're really cool textures. So that to me is always a real good, um, a good influence on, on the vocal parts. So do you write most of those or do Ted or Jimmy come up with some uh, melodic? I wrote most of the basic ones, but there's always room for everyone to take off and do other things and harmonies. And they both come up with parts. They'll add stuff to it or change things that work out really well. Um, yeah, especially if Jimmy with the harmonies a lot of times and Ted with the harmonies, I'll give them some basic stuff, but they'll always send back other cool stuff, which you know, for the most part gets added right in because it, it sounds great. So, 
Yeah. Ted, what's your favorite song to sing on this album? Um, let's see. I've got to remember which ones are from this album in order yeah. to really um, answer that question. Because <laughs> um, I'm going to say something I'm, I, I was just about to say soon, but not today, but that's from the previous album. Um, but I would say uh, Said the Stranger is probably my favorite song to sing and to play. Uh, it's a beast, but yeah. I love that song. Said the Stranger. Yeah, that sounds like it's a, a classic Pattern Seeking Animal song, that, that track. It's just got that rhythm you guys have been that group yes, it, yeah, got... I, mean, I mean there's a, as far as the singing it, it, what's fun to sing i mean i would say that everything that john writes is so melodic um and 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 just really you know it's it's all fun to sing so uh, but I, but now that i'm you know the, the guitar player uh when you combine those two things that's that's what that's the song that i look forward to most in the set actually you know it's, soon but not today is on the previous album but i but i am really looking forward to playing that one as well um you know i think i think it's it's really lends itself to a live stage so mm -hmm. nice little song drop there i like it um so now that you guys have released the three albums and <laughs> as many years are you still hoping to release an album every year or so or are you gonna take a pause at this point Boy, who knows? Um, yeah, because the the next one comes out April first, and uh, only passing through. I've I, I'm constantly writing, so I already have a, three or four songs that have reached critical mass that are actual songs at this point for the next one. Who knows what the next one will be? I've I've told the record company that you know we'll keep going as long as they'll have us, and because I just enjoy writing so much, but it's up to them. You know, it's up to them to see because this will be the third album of a third a three album deal. So you know, we'll see if they want to go further with it. Mm -hmm. I hope so. But uh, no, I'm always writing. So who knows whether it'll be another year between? Well, it might be because I've had a lot of time. We had to wait so much time to put this one out because of the delay in getting vinyl made. You know, there's a six month lead. I'm sure you've heard this before. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it used to be a couple months. You'd have to get the the masters in, then they would get it to you in a couple months, but find out the hard way that it's six months so this was supposed to be at the end of last year and the record company says no nah, not quite because it takes forever to do the vinyl and oh well so uh but since since we turned the album in uh at whatever september of last year i've been writing so there's always always more material in the hopper yeah and ted it's been uh three albums have been written recorded and released um since fox beard's last album noise floor any uh, updates you can give us about the beard for people who are wondering? Nope. All right, mom's the word. <laughs> it's not. It's not mom's the word. I mean, it's. I, I don't. I. Don't, there's no plans right now. Currently, there, we're we're going to continue to play live whenever the opportunity presents itself. We were supposed to go over to Europe and and do some shows. I think I'm supposed to be there right now. Yeah. I think uh, so. Oh um, yeah, in Great Britain. All right, right. Crap! I've missed. <laughs> but, a flight. Yeah. yeah, that wouldn't be the first time, actually. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, but yeah, I, there is some plans to do something in 2023 from a live perspective. But there's no, um, there doesn't appear to be much interest in doing any more recording anytime soon. Gotcha. Well, you got plenty on your plate here uh, with John keeping you busy, so that's great. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, you know, and and. Uh, I, I work too. So <laughs> yeah. that's the other, that's the other thing is that my job has gotten more and more demanding over, over time. And what's funny is I'm doing this with my iPad and, and there's this whole Skype conversation that keeps coming down. That's going on at work right now. I'm mm. sitting here. <laughs> that's constant. And you've moved also, right? You've relocated. Yeah. I live in New York now. I live in uh here. I'll, show you my my uh the view from my office window because it's kind of a winter wonderland at the moment let me see if i can flip this thing or i'll just turn it around well right now actually the we've got a 50 degree day this was completely snow covered until this morning but anyway you might, you might have to hit your uh, background off because we're yeah. still 
in the we're uh, still seeing the Earth's orbit here. Yeah. Wait, I don't know if I know how to do that. That's so funny. Uh, I don't even know how to do that. So I, I think I would actually accidentally hang up if I. All right. Well, <laughs> take your word for it. Winter, winter Wonderland. There. Yeah. Picture a picture a Hallmark movie, and that's basically yeah. it. And has that impacted uh, the band at all, John, with with the relocation and everything? <laughs> Not really, um, uh, because he, before Ted was still in you know northern you know Sacramento area of Northern California, yeah. and and so that's three four hundred miles. So it may as well be New York because I've, uh, so much of what we do is virtual, and we send the tracks back and forth. But it wasn't like the last one was hey ted come on down to the studio we're doing uh, you know every night this week because uh it just wasn't practical so new york or, or california is kind of the same um uh, jimmy's local but uh jimmy and i are the only ones in la right, right. yeah so it's gonna it just adds to costs when we want to do things like rehearsals and everything yeah. um so but but other than that functionally that hasn't really changed anything yeah he's i mean we did did we do any studio recording for Prehensile on it? Yeah, we did. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Jimmy always records. Yeah, Jimmy always records the drums, but there was that time, the, the times we were down to do like photos and all that kind of stuff. So we did right. some stuff in the studio then. Yeah. Because yeah, we did those group vocals. Or... Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, and you played some oh, guitar. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Well, guys, it's an awesome album. I, I didn't think you would be able to match the second one, but I, I'd say it's definitely there and, and maybe it's passed. So congratulations. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. It's, it's tough because it, you just get so subjective with everything and you never know. I, I, it's my favorite of the three. And uh, so, but, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not just saying that. Yeah. So you'll run out, so you run out to your record store. Yeah, buy, right. right Hey kids. <laughs> yeah. Get us at your favorite records hi fi shop. <laughs> yeah. kitty, kitty corner from the soda fountain. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You could have yeah, a three. Dial 411 and ask for the address. Yeah. And the time. So, John, are you going to be um, at Rosfest and on the cruise? Definitely not the cruise. Uh, possibly Rosfest. I'm still going back and forth on that. But again, it's. The traveling across country and the expense, I'm just not sure, you know, I want to do it. I just haven't decided yet. I'll probably decide the next couple of weeks. I like to go hang. Yeah. But the cruise is a definite, is not, that's not going to happen for me. That's such a bummer, dude. It would be so cool to see you out there. I would want you standing by the soundboard so you can make it sound like the album. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mispronounce your last name again. And yeah, Ted can mispronounce my last name. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm just not sure yet on that one. Well, so you'll be getting reports back home on how it's yes. like they, they did what? What happened? They, did, they what? <laughs> they, they did a Temptations song? What? Yeah. They, all, they all wore socks? Right. <laughs> yeah, just socks. <laughs> they did a Chili Peppers thing. What part? <laughs> yeah. That would be so tragic at our age. <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, so yeah it would not be like, well it'd be it'd, it'd be uh, tragic for the red hot chili peppers at this their age too <laughs> at this point i think yeah probably it's definitely yeah the so the socks are gonna need to be a different anyway let's yeah. not, let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's not get too deep into this <laughs> leave that right there i don't know where i was going with that but it wasn't gonna end up anywhere good yeah all right, gentlemen. Well, thank you so much for joining us, filling us in a bit, and uh, all the best to the success of the album. Thank you much. And uh, we hope to see everyone out on the road. <laughs> Including John. <laughs> Including me. <laughs> yeah, just I'm walk by my apartment here in Studio City. Yeah. You may see me. Are you going to come to rehearsals at least? Oh, Did yeah. Like no, there I'll there be. Yeah, That's luckily it. rehearsals are in town. There's still like a 15-minute you know, drive for me, so. Yeah, That'll, I'll be there. I'm, this will, I'm looking forward to all of it. I mean, it, you know, for me, it's been COVID made me really busy with work, and this will be the first really, it's not going to be a vacation by any stretch, but it'll be the first, you know, time off too. So I'm just looking forward to it in many ways. So getting yeah. together with real musicians and playing real music, and five of the best musicians um, I've ever shared, a, or four of them that I've ever shared a stage with. 
Um, yeah, it's gonna be a kick-ass band. You know, and I've and and I'm in Transatlantic, so that's saying a lot. Yeah. <laughs> And you get to go from one good four group to another great four group. So, oh, man. yeah, it's going to be fun. So you're flying out there to rehearse before the transatlantic tour starts. Yeah, which is the, I think the worst part about this whole scenario is that that I can't travel with my keyboard. So I'm, I need to get everything ready before the pattern seeking animal rehearsals. And then I have a day, just one day to get back and kind of review all my keyboard parts before the transatlantic rehearsals start. Uh, and then we, our rehearsals bump right into and the other bad thing is that then I go out on you know rehearse with Transatlantic for a week play a couple shows and you know for, and then play with this band for the first time ever on a stage with you know in that in that scenario you would want to have the last rehearsal be the day before yeah, yeah. Right. in a perfect yeah. world yeah and so, but this is gonna be like a week and a half before it so it's just like yeah there's a, there's yeah should there's be interesting it should be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You're just going to be breaking into Stranger in My Soul in, in the middle of. Yeah. What, what band is this? Yeah. I know. Exactly. <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. I'm going to have so much, uh, so much just crud crammed into my brain. It's just, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what leaks out. Well, good luck to you in that. I'll, I'll catch up with you at Morse Fest and, and see how your brain is handling at that point. Very good. That's right. Cool. See you then. Okay. All right. Well, good. thanks. Good thanks talking all. to you. Okay, guys. Take care. Bye. Right out.